Most students usually don't have the budget to be buying a bunch of expensive tech, but if you're someone like me who really enjoys trying out new pieces of tech, especially those that have a lot of value for what you pay for, then this video might be helpful for you. I'll be going over some pieces of tech that I've bought over the years that have been really helpful in my daily life as a college student. Starting off with one of my most recent purchases, the Staples hiking chair has been really helpful for my comfort and posture while sitting at my desk for long hours at a time. Now even though you might think that a $30 to $50 chair might be fine for you, which it actually might, if you have any back problems or you just want your posture to be better, actually investing your money into a solid chair like this one is definitely worth it. These chairs also have a warranty that lasts up to 10 years, so you'll definitely be sure to get your money's worth if you decide to pick up the Staples hiking chair or a similar chair. If you're interested in learning more about this chair, I made a completely separate review video on it that I'll link down below. For my main everyday keyboard, I'm using the RK987 from Royal Kludge, which I bought for only $37 on Amazon. This is a brown switch mechanical keyboard and sounds and feels great to type on. Whether you're gaming or being productive with schoolwork, this keyboard is great for everything, which is really important, especially for a college student budget. Even after using mechanical keyboards for around two months now, I still feel a lot better typing with a mechanical keyboard rather than a standard laptop keyboard or something like an Apple Magic keyboard. Also, if you want to make your keyboard look cool like mine, you could buy some custom keycaps of your liking and switch out the keycaps that came with your keyboard for the set that you buy. In terms of ergonomics, the second most important thing for a desk setup besides a chair would have to be a monitor arm or a laptop stand depending on what type of computer you're using. If you have a monitor, you're going to want to get a monitor arm which can raise or lower the monitor depending on the seating position you're in. If your monitor is too low and you're sitting pretty high up, you're going to be looking down at the monitor which is going to be bad for your back and your neck over the long term. What you want to do is to make sure that you bring up the monitor to eye level, which is going to take away the strain from your neck. The one that I'm using here is from LTAB, which comes in at $55. Now, if you're just using a laptop, which I'm sure most college students are as their primary computer, I would definitely recommend looking into a laptop stand for the same reasons as getting a monitor arm. A laptop stand definitely has less flexibility than a monitor arm, but still going to raise a laptop screen to a position that's comfortable for you. Another great thing about a laptop stand is that you can raise a laptop to an angle that's going to look a lot better than just placing a laptop on your desk for your webcam. Since the laptop is going to be raised, the webcam can be positioned so that it doesn't look up into your nose or any other awkward angles. This specific laptop stand is from Boyata, which costs around $30. Since most students right now are taking all their classes from home, good quality audio is pretty important. For audio, I use the Sony WH-CH700N headphones and AirPods. If you're a Mac or iPhone user, I would highly recommend looking to AirPods or even AirPods Pro if you have the budget. The lightweight design and instant connectivity is going to make your lives so much easier and a lot more comfortable. If you don't want to spend too much on AirPods, you can pick up over-ear noise-canceling headphones like the Sony WH-CH700N headphones for only around $80, which are a high-quality pair of headphones that sound great. I usually have these on all day whether I'm being productive or relaxing by watching TV or YouTube videos. As for built-in microphones in your headphones or laptop, they're going to be alright quality but nothing too good. If you're on Zoom calls often for school or with your friends or family, I'd recommend getting a good quality microphone. The one I have here is the Fine Fine K683A microphone, which comes with everything you need to get really high quality audio for only $50. In the box you get the microphone, a dual layer pop filter, and a 2-in-1 USB Type-A and a USB Type-C cable. On the microphone itself, there's a microphone level knob which can change how loud you want the microphone to be, and there's a mute button which is really handy to immediately mute or unmute yourself. And finally on the back, there's a 3.5mm headphone jack which can be used to hear yourself while you talk. Okay, so this is a test of the Fine Fine K683A microphone, which is around $50, and I'm kind of curious to see how this stacks up against the more expensive Fine Fine K690 microphone, which comes in at like 100 bucks. And right now I'm like 4 or 5 inches away from the microphone, so hopefully it should sound really good. But the further away you are, it's going to sound a little bit worse. And now I'm around a foot away from the microphone, and hopefully it doesn't sound too bad, because this is probably where you would keep the microphone if you were talking to your friends or if you were on a Zoom call or something. But there's definitely going to be less space in your voice if you're a little bit further away like this, compared to being a little bit closer up like right here. And I'm sure that it's going to be a little bit more bassy, and it's going to sound like that podcast type of voice. And for all my YouTube videos, I actually record all my voiceovers with the K690 microphone, which is 100 bucks. so let's see how this one does, because actually for this entire video, I did record this with this microphone, the K683A. And now this is a test of the Fine Fine K690 microphone, which I've been using for a pretty long time, and immediately I could tell that the build quality is a lot better, but honestly, if the sound quality in the K683A is just as good or a little bit worse for like half the price, then I would definitely recommend that over this microphone. 
And really the only differences here between the K690, which is the $100 microphone, and the cheaper K683A for 50 bucks, is that the actual K690 has these polar patterns, which you can uh, switch them based on the setting that you're in. But for most of the time, you're probably gonna want the cardioid polar pattern in the K690, and it's kind of already built into the cheaper microphone. So if you're just doing Zoom calls or talking to your friends, and that's gonna be perfectly fine, and you're not gonna need a more expensive microphone like this one. And one thing that I'm actually pretty curious about is why they didn't include any type of pop filter for the K690 since it is double the cost of the K683A. And honestly, they really should have because the K683A, this one right here, the pop filter is actually really nice since it actually just goes over the actual microphone and you don't have to put anything over it. And if they just actually included the same exact thing with the K690, then it would have been a better deal. But for right now, I'm actually thinking that for most people, this is gonna be the microphone that you want. Now for something that's gonna make your desk setup or wherever you work a little bit nicer are gonna be some smart lights. The ones that I use in my room are a pair from Lumimin, which are only $20 for two bulbs and can be controlled by your Alexa or Google Home device. Or if you don't have a Google Home or Alexa device, you can just use the app on your phone, which is pretty convenient. The brightness on these is actually pretty good and you can create a nice atmosphere in your room depending on what you want it to be like. For me personally, I either use natural lighting during the day or I use these lights with the natural white color and when it starts to get dark, I use the candlelight color for a nice warm color. Finally, something for when travel starts happening again, a good power bank is always helpful to make sure that your devices are charged. For $20, this one from most Fiat has a 10,000 milliamp hour battery life, which can charge your iPhone up to three or four times and your iPad around one to two times. The ports on the power bank itself are two USB type A ports, a micro USB port, and one USB type C port. The power bank also features quick charge, meaning that it can charge your iPhone or another device up to 50% in the first 30 minutes. Another feature that's a nice addition if you keep the power bank in your car or your bag is a flashlight that's built into the power bank. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this one, consider subscribing for more content. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.